Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my short video about solar power for research. You all know research needs a lot of energy. If we talk, for example, about the future collider at CERN, it's clear we can try to improve the efficiencies, we can save energy, but at some point it will be easier to produce new renewable energy instead of trying to save more. Therefore, I propose to have a solar bridge with Africa. I'm talking about this kind of ideas since more than 20 years. And in the Desert Tech Foundation from 2008, we set up a lot of activities in this direction, but still we are not at a place yet where we could say this solar bridge is working and fully operational. This project is a combination of a renewable energy project to get cheap and sustainable energy from the south. And at the same time, it has geopolitical importance. And since 2008, this political importance becomes even stronger and stronger every day between Europe and Africa. So let's talk about technology now. It's clear that in the desert of Africa and in the Middle East, there's an abundant amount of solar energy and there's much more than we can ever harvest. What is the most efficient way to harvest solar energy? Well, first of all, of course, photovoltaics. It's amazing how the prices went down in the past. So today there are large solar power stations in this area that produce electrical energy with a price of one euro cent per kilowatt hour. So this is even less than what the price of electricity from fossil fuels is, from coal, for example, and certainly much less than the costs of nuclear power. The next question is where to get power at night. Well, a solution that we are proposing also since 20 years now is that we use concentrated solar power. This concentrated solar power produces heat from solar light and this heat can be stored in thermal storage. And from this thermal energy then during the night you can produce electricity. The cost here is still somewhat higher, but the predictions for the next decades is that this will go down to about 4 cents per kilowatt hours. So it's also rather cheap. And of course, in addition, you can use at night wind power, which is also in some areas almost as cheap as solar power. The next technological step then is to get the power from North Africa to Europe. And of course, the cheapest way to do it is using a cable. We use high voltage DC cables because they have the lowest losses compared to AC technology. The costs for such a cable, for example, from Tunisia to Rome is less than one cent per kilowatt hour. And that is also the reason why it is cheaper to produce solar power in Africa and transport the power to Europe instead of producing solar power in Europe. So this cable from Tunisia to Rome is just an example. Of course, you should also have many more cables from other areas, for example, from Gibraltar to Spain, or cables to Cyprus or Sicily, and so on. I like the example from Tunisia to Rome, which also is being discussed since more than 10 years now, because it shows an additional effect. If you have the cable arriving in Rome, of course, the question is how do you get the electricity from there to CERN or from there to DAISY or to any other research infrastructure or university in Europe. The point is in Europe you have a common electricity market to some extent and when you put solar energy to Rome, of course Rome will use this energy. At the moment Rome gets a lot of electricity from the north. If you add solar electricity from the south to Rome, of course you need less electricity going from the north to the south in Italy. So in this sense, you have negative transmission costs within Europe if you put energy from the south to Europe instead of on from the north to the south. So I think it's fair to say that in future for such an installation in Tunisia, for example, solar power will cost not more than about 4 cents per kilowatt hour everywhere in Europe inside of this common electricity market. Of course, one could ask why should CERN care about it? Why should the research community care about it? It's the task of the big companies and maybe of the governments to make sure that we have enough electricity. Well, the point is that there are a lot of political difficulties and a lot of investment issues about this idea. As I said, in the last 15 years, a lot has been happening. There are big solar power plants installed in North Africa and in the Arabian countries. 
but still there's no breakthrough. The reason for that is, as I said, the political and financial situation is difficult between the two continents. And there, I think CERN and the scientific community can help because, for example, CERN has associate members all over the region here. So as well, Tunisia, as Morocco and other countries are part of the CERN family and also the European countries, of course, where the electricity has to be transmitted through. They all somehow belong to CERN and therefore CERN could have a real political impact to push this idea. And of course, not only CERN, but the whole scientific community. CERN and DAISY have a lot of experience already with the Sesame project in Jordan, which was as difficult politically. And also here, they have a common project of the Arabian countries. And this is a peace promoting project, which finally worked very well. As a scientist and as institutions for research, I think you have to make sure that our future energy consumption is sustainable at the highest level. And sustainable for me means that it has to be renewable and that it has to be most efficient. There are big programs in the governments to replace fossil fuels by 2050 by renewable energies. But I think the ramp up of the renewable energies will not work fast enough. We have seen in the pandemic that even producing vaccines is not working as efficiently as it should. And in the same sense, I believe that the ramp up of renewable energies in the next decades will not be fast enough. Electricity will become more and more expensive in the future. And therefore, I think we should push as much as possible already now. And I propose to push this solar bridge between Europe and Middle East and North Africa. High voltage DC lines are the most efficient ways to do that at large scale. At the moment, politics and industry is pushing hydrogen technology a lot. We know hydrogen is an important energy carrier, but we also know hydrogen technology has an inefficiency of at least 50% because you have to produce hydrogen and you have to reproduce electricity from that and there you lose at least 50% of the energy. So in this sense, in addition to hydrogen, of course, we have to push these high voltage DC cables, which are maybe not as attractive for industry, but they are very more efficient and very more attractive for the end user that needs electricity. Now a last example why I believe that the scientific community should push the technology of renewable energy. We have the example from about 20 years ago where DAISY was involved in connecting certain areas of Asia with a satellite based broadband infrastructure for research. At that time, there was not enough internet speed across the continents and DAISY and other research institutions made sure that at least the research could go on at a high efficiency. Today, we have the same problem with renewable energy. The renewable energy infrastructure is not at a status which we need nowadays. So I think there is a justification why the research community tries to push their own system of renewable energy. So if we are able to promote the solar bridge between North Africa and Europe, we can have in future a much cheaper price and a much more reliable system for electricity on the large scale for our large research infrastructure. I hope you got the message. Thank you for listening. And see you next time.